Okay, so where are we at? So I, I want to start with an old problem. Just to say, hey, you know, let's remember the good old days. So suppose you have x prime equals ax. And you might notice that this x is not a bold x. This is just a function. Just plain old x of t. Like, ah, oh, we missed those days. We missed those days. They're coming back. And we have an initial condition x is 0. We're like, OK, that's easy. We can solve that. And the solution, this is one of the first things we learned, was we said, OK, the, the answer is you take e to the a t, where that a is what's in front of the x. And then multiply by the initial condition, x is 0, and we're done. We're like, OK, well, let's now go into our new setting. So this is where we've been. Now x prime equals ax. But this x, these are bold x's. Oh, bold. Well, that means, you know, it's not like one function. This is really a system of functions. And this A isn't a number. This A is a matrix. OK. And there's, again, an initial condition, x of 0. And then we're like, well, OK, well, maybe it would be cool if the answer kind of matched what we did before. So we said, OK, maybe this is e to the a t x of 0 where we put that matrix upstairs in the exponent. And you're like, what? That's crazy. But then you're like, wouldn't it be cool if it were true? Is it possible? By the end of the day, we will say, yes, it is possible. And it's a beautiful thing that happens. And it turns out, not only is this a maybe, this is actually true. But we have to understand, what does this mean? And that's what we want to talk about. So before we get there, we're going to sort of talk about a very closely related topic, very closely related, actually. And it says the following. We'll start with our system, x prime equals ax. And it says, all right, we've been talking about how we solve it. You know, there's this idea, find the eigenvalues, find the eigenvectors. That helps us find <coughs> these solutions. And then we go from there. So it says, all right, well, suppose you have your solutions. You have a full set, linearly independent. And what you'll do is you'll put them all into a matrix. And so here's this matrix. This, by the way, is a capital phi. One of the nice things about taking math classes, right? You get to learn all the Greek letters. So now as you drive around and you pass by all those sororities and fraternities, it's like, I know what those symbols mean now. So this is a phi. And it's just taking those solutions, and you put each column as a solution. So great. Now you might say, haven't we seen this matrix before? And the answer is yes. We have seen this before. When we were finding the Ronskian, that's what we said. Take the solutions, put them into the columns. And so we know from the Ronskian that since these are linearly independent, that that this determinant of this matrix is not zero. Well, since it's not zero, that means it's invertible. All right, so how does that help us? Well, now we have this amazing fact, beautiful fact. And it says, suppose you have x prime equals ax, and there's this initial condition x of zero. Then your solution x of t is this fundamental matrix, phi of t, times phi 0 inverse times x of 0. So in some sense, once you have this matrix, it's super easy to find solutions. Of course, how do we get the matrix? Well, we just find the solution. So, you know, a little catch there. All right, but there's this exercise. Verify the above fact. OK, so we're going to do this exercise. Now, there's actually two parts to this verification. One part says, well, show it's a solution. In other words, we claim that this expression on the right-hand side works. So we want to show it's actually a solution to the differential equation. Well, I'll call it x prime equals ax. And then, of course, there's a second part that says, show it is the solution. Now, what are we talking about when 
we say, the solution. What does that refer to? So what? what? Well, not unique. What, what do we mean by the solution? Well, the initial conditions is what we mean. Because this isn't just saying find the general solution for x prime equals ax. It says x prime equals ax with an initial condition. So this refers to saying, hey, show the initial condition is satisfied. All right, so we have two things to do. Show it's actually a solution and show that the initial condition is satisfied, making sure that is the solution that we want. Which one do you want to do first? There's two different ideas. First one. First one, okay. To show it's a solution. Now, to show it's a solution, we say, well, we know that all solutions have to have a particular form. So they have the, the following form, and uh, namely, some constant times x1 plus some constant x2 all the way up to some constant xn. So in other words, this is going back to the idea of like superposition. So if we have these n solutions, we take a linear combination, and these will get all the solutions. So, all right, so how does that help us? So now a little bit of a, a detour. So I'm going to pull up a quick example here. So let's take this matrix. I'm calling this, I call this A. And now I'm going to multiply A by another vector. I'll call it C. So C1, C2. And it's not very hard to do this multiplication. This is you know, fairly straightforward. You know, it's you know, A11, C1, A12, C2, A21, C1, A22, C2. All right, great. But we can do the following. Say, hey, see this nifty plus sign? I can take this vector and say it's two vectors added together. Just break it up over the addition. And then I say, hey, look at this first vector. C1 is common. I'll pull it out. The second vector, C2 is common. Pull it out. So what we have is it's really C1 times the first column and C2 times the second column. So what's the moral here? So the moral is, if I take a, a matrix A and I multiply it by a vector C, what comes out is a nice linear combination of the columns of A. It's some, you know, the, the, and the combination comes from the entries of this vector C. Okay, so that's just a little basic observation about matrix multiplication. And you might be saying, how does that help us? Well, Let's come back here, and we'll say this part right here, we can call this C. It's a vector. So what we really have is we have phi of t times C, which I can write as C1, C2, all the way down to Cn. And now, when we carry this out, if we go back to what we just talked about, you know, how do we do this multiplication when you have a vector times a matrix? Well, it's the first entry times the first column. So C1, X1. Second entry times the second column. C2, X2. And you keep going till you get to the last entry times the last column. Cn, Xn. And so we say, well, wait a second, that's a solution. It's a linear combination of x1 through xn. So it is indeed a solution. Okay, so that's the first part. All right, what's the second thing we have to do? Initial conditions, great, okay, so. Now what we'll do is we'll, we'll check the initial conditions. So we plug 0 in. We say, OK, well, what does x of 0 equal? All right, well, according to this, we would have 
phi at 0, because I'm just plugging in t equals 0. And the rest of this doesn't depend on, on t. So phi 0 inverse x 0. But what do you notice? What, what's here at the front? It's the, it's the identity matrix, because it's a matrix times its inverse, which says, hey, these sort of cancel out. And so what ends up happening is we get just x of 0. And what, but what did we want to get out? Yeah, that's what we wanted. So it's like, woohoo, yes, check. And so we succeeded. So in other words, at time equals 0, we do get the value x of 0, which is good. And we get that this answer is a linear combination of the n solutions. And so therefore, it's a solution. So it's the solution. Great. So this is a really powerful thing. And the punchline for today, in case we, we don't say it later, we'll say it right now at the start. This thing that we talked about, this e to the at, it turns out it will be equal to this. So when you look at the end, e to the at is the same as phi of t, phi 0 inverse. All right. So now uh, a problem. So given x prime equals 4, 2, 3, minus 1, x, good. Find phi of t, phi 0 inverse. OK, great. Now, before we start, there's a question here. I want us to answer this question. Does the answer, and, and the answer, in other words, this output at the end, will that depend on the order we put x1, x2 into the columns? Because when we were thinking about phi, we were saying, oh, well, I'll put the solutions into the columns. But what if I change the order I put solutions into the columns? So maybe I put x2 and then x1. But I can also do other things. Maybe I can scale x1. So I can say, look, I, I double x1, or I quintuple x1. I can multiply by any number I want. Will this change the final answer? No. All right, one person is brave and just says no. And now, to make you even more uncomfortable with the answer no, but you are changing phi of t. You can make radical changes to phi of t. Are you sure you want to stick with no? Yes. One of those wonderfully ambiguous answers. <laughs> yes, I want to stick with no. Uh, and so the correct answer is indeed no. Regardless of how you, you put those answers into the columns, regardless of how you, you choose the, the scaling, it won't change the final answer. Now, that's not so obvious. It's not so obvious at all. You know, you can say, you know, it seems true, but why? So, do you know the reason? Is it because 5t, <coughs> you multiply 5t by the inverse? So if it, you multiply it in any order times its own inverse, it'll just Right, in some sense, that's the intuition it, it cancels out. But can we, can we get, is there like a nice justification that we can just say, oh, there's one word that's like, oh, yes, it must be true. It must be this word. In fact, there is a word. <laughs> this word. So what is this word that says, yes, it, it, it. A. A is and not the E. e. OK, someone knows how to play this game. You go with the most common letter of the alphabet. Uh, R. The X is, I think someone's trying to sabotage you here. I'll, 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 I'll skip that one. What? S, S is good choice. Oh, someone got it really quick. Uniqueness. So, good. So that's the word, that's the word. Great, you guys are good at this game. Now, you might say, wait, wh what do you mean by uniqueness? What's going on here, Steve? So uniqueness says, when we're talking about these differential equations, we care, do we have an answer? 
And is there only one? You know, we want to find the one. And we've said before that there are unique answers. Now, here's the key. We know that this is the right answer. And so, therefore, there has to be some sort of uniqueness involved. And so, uniqueness says this piece here says that this will always be the same. So, uniqueness says this is fixed regardless of your choice of phi. Because if it changed with phi at all, if, if, this, if you could choose a different phi and this changed, even a little bit, just like a microscopic bit, then you would have different, different answers. You'd lose uniqueness. <coughs> and so uniqueness is what guarantees you that this expression, 5t phi 0 inverse, will always be the same regardless of how you, you pack in your phi. OK. So good. So now, where do we actually start with this question? Where to begin? Sorry, what? OK, good. So the suggestion is we solve for eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Now, the reason we're solving for eigenvalues and eigenvectors, solving for eigenvalues and eigenvectors is really saying, let's find some solutions. Because that matrix phi, or maybe it's phi, phi phi, pho fum, one of those. Anyways, the key here is that the columns are solutions. And the way we find solutions are eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So let's start. So we'll start with our eigenvalues. So we're going to take the determinant of lambda i minus a, which is, OK, so that would be determinant of lambda minus 4 minus 2 minus 3 lambda plus 1. All right. So uh, lambda minus 4, lambda plus 1. All right, diagonal going down. Subtract, the diagonal going up. Minus 2 times minus 3. Well, now what? Expand. OK, I think someone's saying expand. Lambda squared plus lambda, minus 4 lambda, minus 3 lambda, minus 4, minus 6, minus 10. And remember, what are we doing with this? Set it equal to 0 and solve for lambda. Well, does, does this factor? Are we in luck? Yes, yes? OK, good. Woohoo, we're in luck. I like it when that happens. OK. So how does it factor? Lambda minus 5, lambda plus 2. And you can check, right? Lambda squared, 2 lambda minus 5 lambda, minus 3 lambda, and minus 10. So what are our eigenvalues? All right, great. Yeah, so we get 5, negative 2. All right. Now what? Eigenvectors. So, well, let's start with 5. So I'm going to look at the way I, I do this. Take 5i minus a and uh, do a little bit of drawing the zero matrix. What really this is doing is it's looking for linear relationship in entries in the eigenvector. So I'm thinking about coming up here. I can put in lambda equals 5 to help me fill this in faster. So we'd have uh, 1 minus 2, 3, 6, 0, 0. Now, when you have a 2 by 2, oh, whoops. I feel like I've, I've made a mistake here. Yeah, the minus 3 is minus 3. When you have a 2 by 2, what will happen 100% of the time is you'll be able to knock out a row. And if you can't, then you don't have an eigenvalue. So we knock out a row. I'll knock out the bottom row which really means multiply the top row by 3 and add down. And so we have uh, 1 minus 2, 0, 0, 0, 0. And you might say, OK, but what does this mean? What does this mean? Well, 
What's really going on here is we're after our eigenvector, call it xy. And so <clears throat> you should think of this as x, this is y. And so we have relationships between x and y. So this is, <clears throat> excuse me, this is what happens with these eigenvectors. You, you look for these relationships. In our case, what's our relationship? Yeah, x minus 2y equals 0, or x has to equal 2y. So we say, all right, so our eigenvector xy can really be written as 2yy, y, or you could pull the y out, so y2, 1. So what's our eigenvector? 2, 1. Now, of course, when we phrase that, what's our eigenvector, we could say, well, what's in eigenvector? We could have made many choices. 4, 2 is an eigenvector. 6, 3. 200, 100. See, that's the scaling. And will it change our final answer? No, because no, that's what we said. But because we love ourselves, we want to make it easy. So we're going to choose the nicest answer. because That makes it less likely we, to make a mistake. Okay, but good news is we still have another eigenvector to go. So woohoo, more to do, more to do, more to do. I know that's probably what you're thinking. You're just excited. Natural reaction when you get to do a math problem. It's like, oh, sweet. There's more for us to do. Awesome. Okay, so now we're doing the same thing but for negative 2. Well, what should we do? Yeah, knock out a row. I think it's easier to knock out the top row in this case because the bottom row seems a little bit nicer. So I can multiply by negative 2, add up. And I say, OK, all right. So we'll get 0, 0, 0, minus 3, minus 1, 0. Now again, we're still thinking of it. There's this relationship here, x, y. So what does our equation become in this case? Yeah, minus 3x minus y equals 0. Or we could say that y equals minus 3x. So our vector, xy, we can write that as x minus 3x. Or x1, negative 3. So our other eigenvector, well, simplest choice. 1, negative 3. All right. Progress. Progress. So we've gotten our eigenvalues. We've got the corresponding eigenvectors. What's next on our, our list of things to do on this problem? Sorry, what? Do phi. OK. So we're going to find 5t. And actually, it's not going to be too bad, because really, what we've secretly been doing is finding our solutions. And remember that the columns of phi of t are the solutions to our differential equation. So our columns are going to have the, the form. Well, it's e to the eigenvalue t times eigenvector. That's the first column. Then e to the other eigenvalue t times that eigenvector, that's the second column. So we could write that as uh, 2e to the 5t, e to the 5t, e to the minus 2t, minus 3e to the minus 2t. So there's our 5t. Not so bad. So great, we've got that. What's next? Oh, you're just in awe of this problem. I, I appreciate that. It's a beautiful problem. Find the inverse of phi. Well, we don't have to find the whole inverse of phi. We can actually just find phi inverse of 0. Slightly easier. Uh, well, phi of 0 inverse, I should say. So let's start with saying, what is phi at 0? Well, what will it turn out to be? 
the coefficients. And do you recognize these columns? Yeah, they're, they're the eigenvectors. Not a coincidence, not a coincidence. Okay, so that's phi of zero. We need the inverse of that. So the fun part, finding the inverses. So 2, 1, 1, minus 3. And then the other side, put in the identity. And our goal is we want to make this left-hand side look like the identity. And by the time we make this look like the identity, this other side will be our inverse that we're after. All right, so here we go. I like to work column by column. So let's think about the first column. I want this to look like what the identity matrix should look like. So one, zero. What are some things we can do? Well, we can't, well, be careful what we mean by subtract one from both of them, because we can't do that. Remember, our operations are row operations. So we can swap rows. We can scale a single row by a column. And you can multiply a row by a number and add it to another row. Those are the three things you're allowed to do, row operations. OK. So, so your goal is trying to get a 1 there. Yes. Here's a quick way to get a 1. Swap. Now, you might say, wait, wouldn't my way have worked? Yes. But swapping is easier for me to write down. So I'll, I'll swap. You'll always get the same answer as long as you, you follow the rules. Uh, but I like to try to keep things simple because uh, I'm old, so I've lost the ability to do complex math in my head. OK. So we've got the 1. What's our next goal? Make that a 0. What can we do? Yeah, negative 2 times the top, add it to the bottom. We won't change the top row. We will change the bottom. What will the, the bottom become? Zero, seven, one, negative two. OK, first column's good. Now we come to column two. We want to make this column look like a zero, one. What can we, what can we do? Where do we start? Well, if we do that, we're going to put where this was zero won't be zero anymore. So we kind of want to, we want, we, we, we're like, we look at this and we're like, whoa, this is beautiful. Don't touch it. Be careful. So, so now we can't add the top row down, but we can add up. And you're like, well, but how do we get rid of that seven? Well, remember, there's something else we can do. Yeah. You can divide, which is really the same as multiplying by one seventh. Okay, that's another way. And I know what you're thinking, but Steve, you hate fractions. I do. But sometimes it happens. You know, fractions happen. Okay, zero, one, one seventh minus two sevenths. Okay, last one entry to go. What to do? What to do? Yeah, three times the bottom, add up. Okay, and if we do that, great news, we haven't changed the bottom, so that's nice. Uh, on the left-hand side, we'll have the identity. Two entries to go. What's the, the entry in the upper left? Three sevenths, that's good. What's this entry in upper right? One seventh, right? Because it's negative six sevenths plus one. All right, so that says this piece here, this is our inverse. So that's phi of 0 inverse. But you can write it in a slightly nicer way. Uh, you can say, look, everything has a factor of a seventh. So you can say this is 1 seventh times 3, 1, 1, minus 2. Now, if you were paranoid, Say you were on a test, and you were like, oh, I'm not sure if I did this right. What could you do? Do it again? 
<laughs> no. No. We could check our answer, right? Multiply these together, like 6 plus 1 is 7 times the 7 makes 1. 2 minus 2 is 0. 3 minus 3 is 0. 1 plus 6 is 7 times the 7th is 1. So, so this is the right inverse. All right, are we done? You're like, Steve, <laughs> it's been so long, what are we doing? We've now found that thing, 5, 0, inverse. So what's the last thing for us to do? Multiply, yeah. So the good thing is we have both of our pieces on the page. So we're going to take our 2e to the 5t, e to the minus 2t, e to the 5t, minus 3e to the minus 2t, times that by 1 7th, 3, 1, 1, minus 2. Now the 1 7th we can just leave on the outside. And we just do the multiplication. So 2e to the 5t times 3 will be 6e to the 5t plus e to the minus 2t. Then we'll get 2e to the 5t. And then minus 2e to the minus 2t. Then we'll get 3e to the 5t minus 3 e to the minus 2t, and finally, e to the 5t plus 6 e to the minus 2t. And that's it. So, in some sense, this matrix, it's a really cool matrix because once you have this, every solution to the differential equation we started with it's super easy now to find an answer. You give us a set of initial conditions, we can get you an answer really quick. So it's, it's a really lovely matrix. All right. Well, that's great, but we are promising you matrix exponentials. All right. Uh, that's where we're going to go. Uh, any last questions before we go jump into matrix exponentials? Good. So here we go. So we think back to saying, well, what are things we know how to do with matrices? Well, we know how to scale a matrix, we know how to add matrices, and we know how to multiply matrices. And we're like, okay, well, what kind of things can you do with those operations of scaling, adding, and multiplying? And it turns out that there's this lovely thing called polynomial. And if you think about polynomials, those are the only things you have to be able to do. You have to be able to scale things, multiply things, and add things. So you're like, great, anything that's a polynomial, you can do with the matrix. So you start thinking, all right, we're after exponentials. Is there anything where an exponential looks like a polynomial? And then we're like, whoa, wait a second. Calc 2 comes to our rescue, because Calc 2 says everything looks like a polynomial because we have this cool thing called Taylor series. Like, wow, this is awesome. And I, I know, I, I'm excited too. So e to the z, it turns out, is like a polynomial. But of course, polynomial in quotation marks is this infinite series. So e to the z is like 1 plus z, 1 over 2 factorial z squared, 1 over 3 factorial z cubed, and so forth and so on. All right, so now. Well, how do we do e to a matrix? Well, we just think about replacing our z's by our matrices. So it's like, OK, that z becomes a, z squared, a squared, so forth and so on. The most subtle thing is, is the start. We had one before. What is it now? The identity matrix. Because it can't stay one, because that wouldn't make sense. One plus, a number plus a matrix doesn't make sense, but identity matrix plus something makes sense. So we say, okay, this is how we define e to a matrix. And the first reaction is, okay, all right, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll bite. But can you actually do anything with it? So for example, can we compute e to a matrix? So we're going to do that. So here's this really nice matrix. Now, that looks like a, a misprint. That's, that is not A. That's actually a capital lambda. Again, wow, 
More capital Greek letters. That's so cool. OK, so now we know lambda. And so this is a, a very nice matrix. We call these matrices diagonal. And the, a diagonal matrix is things where the only things that are interesting are on the diagonal. Off the diagonal, you get zeros. And they have some really beautiful things that happen with them. And our goal is, let's compute e to the lambda. OK, well, let's uh, make some notes here. So if we're going to compute e to the lambda, we've got to do things like lambda squared, lambda cubed, so forth, and so on. So let's just uh, do a little bit of computation here. So like lambda squared. So a0, 0, 0, b times a0, 0, 0, b. What does that become? A squared, 0, 0, B squared. All right, the last entry, 0, zero and B squared. What about lambda cubed? Now, you might think, how do I compute that? That's lambda squared times lambda. We already know how to do lambda squared. It's A squared, 0, 0, B squared times A, 0, 0, B. What do you see? A cubed, zero, zero, B cubed. Now, do you spot something emerging here? Yes. So what if I ask you lambda to the k? What would you say? Good. So this is, when I said diagonal matrices are nice, here's one of the nice things about diagonal matrices, is when you're multiplying diagonal matrices together, you just have to multiply with the diagonals. So a squared times a is a cubed. b squared times b is b cubed, and so forth and so on. Now, this is special to diagonal matrices. So this doesn't work for other matrices. But diagonals are nice. So now, how does that help us? So if we're computing e to this a0, 0, 0, b, well, according to this, we're going to take the identity matrix. 1, 0, 0, 1, plus A, A, 0, 0, B, plus the next term, 1 over 2 factorial, A squared, 0, 0, B squared, and 1 over 3 factorial, A cubed, 0, 0, B cubed, and so forth and so on. Well, let's group things in each entry. So, in the upper left entry, what do we have? One plus a plus a squared divided by two factorial plus a cubed over three factorial, good, and the dot, dot, dot. Now, the dot, dot, dot is secret code in math for the pattern continues, but I don't want to write infinitely many things because I, I, I have more to do in life. OK. So that's the first entry. We'll come back to that. The upper right entry, 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0, 0. Lower left entry, 0, same thing. Bottom right entry, 1 plus b, yeah, 1 over 2 factorial b squared, 3 factorial b cubed, <coughs> dot, dot, dot. And now the great, huh, have we seen these kinds of things before? The 1 plus a plus 1 over 2 factorial a squared, 1 over 3 factorial a cubed, and so forth and so on. Where have we seen this kind of expression before? Oh, right. It looks like, oh, yeah, it's right here. Oh, wow. That was very convenient. OK. So that is e to the a. And the other entry down in the corner is e to the b. And so it turns out that when you have these diagonal matrices, it's very easy to take the exponential of that diagonal matrix. It's, it's actually pretty nice. 
That's cool. That's cool. Now you might be thinking, but Steve, most matrices aren't diagonal. Or are they? Okay. So, here's a fact. Suppose you have a, a matrix A, you have your eigenvalues, and you have a, a full set of eigenvectors. Now, granted, not all matrices have this form. But suppose we have that. Then what we can do is we can say, let's make a new matrix, we'll call it B, where we just fill it full of our eigenvectors. This is probably going to feel a little bit familiar. Now, there's a really interesting fact. It turns out that A is equal to this matrix B times the diagonal matrix of the eigenvalues times B inverse. If we have time at the end, which we won't, I'll explain why, but we won't. Uh, so, but, but the moral is, it, this is a true statement. This is a true statement. Now, how does that help us? Well, what if I take A to the power of K? Now you might say, how can I do that? And here's a quick answer. So if I take A to the K, that's B, I'm going to think of lambda, my diagonal matrix, B inverse to the K. So I'm just going to write that K times. But you'll notice there's a lot of times when I have B inverse B. And what happens to all those B inverse Bs? They become identities, which means you don't need to worry about them. So what you really have is you have B, lambda, 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 B inverse. In particular, you have B, lambda to the K, B inverse. But diagonal matrices are super easy to take powers of. You just take powers of the diagonal entries. So that's why it's easy to work with in here. So right, because so A to the K, you, we take the diagonal and raise everything to the kth power. All right. And now we say, great. So what is e to the at? Well, we have b, e to the lambda 1t, e to lambda 2t, so forth and so on, down to the bottom e to lambda nt, b inverse. That's it. Now, why is that true? Well, again, This is the computation, it's e to the at, so you just replace everything by at, duh, 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 so forth and so on. And like at quantity squared is really a squared t squared, at quantity cubed, a cubed t cubed, that's not so hard. And now you say, well wait, I, I can replace everything along here with something where I have a b, b inverse. So for example, i is b, b inverse. Okay, that's not hard. a, b lambda, b inverse. a squared, b lambda squared, b inverse. And all the way down. Now, everything has a B on the left, pull it out. Everything has a B inverse on the right, pull it out. And then the middle stuff is the stuff we like. It's the stuff diagonal we can work with. We do the same thing we did before, and so we get exponentials on the diagonal entries. So that's how it works out. All right. So that means we can actually compute these things. So, for instance, can we can find e to the at for a equals 4, 2, 3, minus 1. Now, you might think, that might take us a long time. Will it? Well, normally it would, but what do we have in our advantage? <laughs> we already did a lot of work on this matrix. We're like, we're pros on this matrix here. So, for instance, we know what B is. We can just recycle here. So, B is this 2, 1, 1, minus 3. We know what our lambda is. It's 5, 0, 0, minus 2. We even know what B inverse is. And you might say, how do we know B inverse? Well, remember how we pointed out that phi is 0? These are the eigenvectors. Well, that's B. So this phi zero inverse is B inverse. So it's one seventh, three, one, one minus two. So we have a lot of the work already done. So 
we can say uh, now e to the at, according to this, well, that's 2, 1, 1, minus 3. That's our matrix B. Then we have, on the middle, we have e to the 5t, 0, 0, e to the minus 2t. And then we have our B inverse on the end. OK. Now, let's do a little multiplication at the start. And I just want to point out that what we get here We'll get 2 e to the 5t, and then 0. Over here, we'll get e to the minus 2t. Then next, we'll, in the bottom row, we'll get e to the 5t. And the last entry, minus 3 e to the minus 2t, times this 1 7th, 3, 1, 1 minus 2. And because of time, because I do want one more example, we're going to squeeze in one more. Have we seen that before? Yes, yes. What is that? That's what we're calling phi of t. These columns are the solutions. And this is what we're calling phi of 0 inverse. So there really is a connection here between e to the a t and that computation we did before. So that computation at the end of the day is really the same thing. We just didn't realize it. Now, the last problem. OK, without computing any eigenvalues or eigenvectors. OK, good. We don't have time for that. Compute e to the at. What? Oh, Ugh. all right. So you have, this looks initially, you might say, uh, kind of hopeless, right? But. It's not so bad. We say, well, what is e to the at? Well, there's a definition. It's i a times t. Then it would be 1 over 2 factorial t squared a squared, 1 over 3 factorial t cubed a cubed, and so forth. Now, let's see if we can spot a pattern here. We know what the identity looks like. That's pretty straightforward. We, we, we're really good at that one. We even know, I'll put the t in the front. We even know what a looks like because they gave it to us. So that's helpful. It helps when they give you the answer. OK, so now let's talk about a squared. So 1, 2, minus 1, minus 6, minus 6, 6, minus 5, minus 4, 5 times 1, 2, minus 1, minus 6, minus 6, 6, minus 5, minus 4, 5. OK, is anybody really good at doing this that can shout out some answers for us? 1, minus 12, plus 6, minus 6. 2, minus 12, plus 4, minus 6. Minus 1, plus 12, minus 5, 6. Uh, minus 6, plus 36, minus 30, 0. Plus 6, minus 36, plus 30, 0. 6, minus 36, plus 30, 0. Minus 5, plus 24, minus 25, minus 6. Minus 10, minus 24, plus 20. Oh, wait, minus 20? Okay, hold on. Minus 10, plus 24. Minus 20, minus 6. 5, minus 24, plus 25, 6. Okay, so that's a squared. Okay, and now you're like, great, Steve. That's nice. What do you notice about that? Lots of zeros. You're like, oh, I like zeros. Now, we're out of time, so I'll tell you what a cubed is. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. What we like to call nice. <laughs> OK. Because a cubed is 0, that means this term is gone. But what else is gone? Everything after it. Right. Which means that that's the answer. You can even put it together, right? 1 plus t minus 3t squared 
2t minus 3t squared minus t plus 3t squared, and so forth and so on. So minus 6t, uh, 1 minus 6t, and let's see, 6t minus 5t plus 3t squared minus 4 minus 3t squared, and 1 plus 5t plus 3t squared. Okay, good. See, that's not so bad. That's not so bad. All right, well, like I said, we'd run out of time. But since you are watching the video, maybe, if you're in the case where you uh, have AVI equals lambda IVI, and you write B is a bunch of vectors, V1 through Vn, then it turns out, this is always true, A times B is the same as B, lambda 1 through M, lambda N, where it's diagonal matrix. And you might say, well, wait, wait. How does that relate to what we were doing? Well, if B is invertible, multiply both sides by B inverse, you get A, B, B inverse, is b lambda 1 through lambda n, b inverse. But then you say, aha, that's really just a. OK, so then why is that true? All right, well, the answer. Because, you know, people want to know. We're going to actually check it column by column. So this is a little vector we like to call ek. And it's just saying, grab the kth entry as 1. Everything else is 0. And now do multiplication on both sides. So if I take A times B times EK, well, the EK, this goes back to what we were talking about before. This is grabbing the kth column of B. Now, that says you come to the kth column, that's our VK. And we know A times VK is lambda K VK. All right, that wasn't so bad. How about this one? All right, here we're grabbing the kth column. Now, the kth column will be where you have a lambda k in the kth diagonal entry. So it's really lambda k e k. So, but now just, OK, this is a, a scalar. So that's lambda k. And b times e k is, as we said, v k. And I said, well, wait a second. These are matching. And they, and they always match. And since they always match, that says regardless of our choice for e k, they're always the same. Well, that's only possible if the matrices are equal. In fact, what you're really doing is when you're multiplying by ek, you're saying, what does the kth column look like? And this says, all the columns look the same for both sides. And therefore, this is true, which means that what we want to show is also true. So that was the extra piece we didn't have time for. All right, good.